Hi everybody, I'm John Weltman, and I'm a gay dad myself through surrogacy. My husband Cliff and I have been together for 28 years, and we have two boys. One is biologically mine, one is biologically his, with the same surrogate mother. At the time we started this, back in the very early 1990s, because my kids are teenagers now, and I must warn you, careful what you wish for. <laughs> they will become teenagers. So before I go selling you on any babies, think about what you're getting later. Um, but in any event, um, we did traditional surrogacy. There was no way to do egg donor surrogacy at that time. And I think because we're going to have speakers later today, we're going to be talking about both, even though the majority of the agencies up here primarily do gestational, or what I call egg donor surrogacy, it's important you understand the difference. Um, gestational surrogacy means that a woman is carrying a child where she's just gestating it. It's not her genetic child. And so in the case of men who don't have eggs, you need an egg donor as well. That's why we call it egg donor surrogacy. But um, it is simply a process where the two women are brought together. Dr. Levy will talk a little bit about how that happens. Um, and one providing the egg, you all fertilizing that egg, and then implanting it into the gestational carrier who carries it to term. So you need two women involved in your process. The way we did it, traditional surrogacy, involves simply the insemination of a woman where she actually is inseminated her own egg at the right time in the month for her own egg, and then she carries that child to term for you. It's a very different process. It has different legal ramifications, but I'm not, even though I am a lawyer, I'm not talking about the legal part, so I'll leave that to Melissa. Um, but it is, in general, two very different stories. It has different costs attached to it. And for the most part, I think you'll find most traditional services today are independent journeys. There aren't a lot of agencies that will do them. I, I personally had a wonderful experience with it, so I like both. But it is something where there are very different aspects. Our job in terms of finding um, a carrier for you is something that I think all of the agencies up here and around the room do similarly. In our case, it's probably about 1 in 20 women who fit all those factors, but the key elements are, first and foremost, does she come from a state where surrogacy is legal? New York is not a good state. Surrogacy is not legal here. The next question is, has she had children of her own? Is it someone who has been through the process enough to know she can actually give up a child, but also that she's carried a child to term healthily with no complications, nothing for you to worry about going forward? Um, another question is, what is her support system like? And her family, um, her husband if she's married, her parents, are they supportive of what she's going to do? How is she going to talk to her children about this? What about her community? All those kind of psychological aspects are very important to screen on a surrogate before she begins with you. And then there's a whole medical piece, which I will largely leave to Dr. Levy to talk about. It's also about screening for sexually transmitted diseases, screening uh, for all kinds of things that you want to make sure don't get passed on your baby. But also if she's married, her husband who could pass sexually transmitted diseases onto her needs to be screened for. Drug, alcohol, etc. Um, so all those things need to happen before your match can really be finalized and you can say, I want to move forward with this woman. The typical gestational carrier track, I think if I said to you 18 months, it would be fair. I definitely have had people in less than nine months have a baby, and I've had people in more than two years. I would say most people fit in the year, year and a half time frame. But you might not be successful on the first try. Um, and I generally find with doctors we get about a 70% success rate on any given try. So it goes over 90% after two tries, but I can't guarantee you'll be one of the ones who will be the first try. Um, in terms of donors, this is an area in which we probably do differ more from the other agencies up here in that most of the people who come to us want a known donor. And that's due to my personal experience with the traditional surrogacy. You know your surrogate. You have to know her. You have to go through the process. I strongly advocate against it for a million reasons. Um, the number one reason is that in the Ukraine, the child is, the ch is not the child of the woman, and therefore it's your child. But the child doesn't get a Ukrainian passport. Um, and so how do you get that baby out of the country? You have to try to get a U.S. passport for the baby. In India, the same problem exists. You must do an adoption 
in India um, because it's not her baby. Well, it is her baby, and it is her husband's baby, but you can't get an Indian passport. So again, you have to do an adoption there and then try to get a visa to come home. There have been so many horror stories, on top of which I have a dozen clients presently in my program who spent anywhere from twenty to sixty thousand dollars in India trying to get this success. My experience is it's about a ten percent success rate. They're claiming forty-five. It has not been my experience. So be very, very, very cautious about those two foreign countries. I've heard recent things about Armenia and South Africa. I don't want to get into them because I don't know enough about them. But those two countries have become very serious issues for a lot of players. We used to, until quite recently, and um, due to a combination of legal things and my own staff's sense of how difficult it is to find a woman who fits all the criteria of a donor, as well as all the criteria of a carrier, because they're very different criteria, is so difficult. And so few women now really wanting to do traditional surrogacy that we have, you know, largely stopped it.